Welcome everybody to this DSLR manual mode for video essentials for starters. Hello everyone. DSLR cameras have gone beyond boundaries on what it was originally designed for and more importantly, it has given literally everyone from hobbyists to professionals access into the film and video playground in a small form factor. What's best, learning how to use a DSLR can be quite simple and straightforward turn on your camera and flip the auto switch. It however becomes a little bit complicated when you need a professional feel and you need to use a manual setting and this is why this course was designed. My name is Tolu, tech evangelist and visual production generalist. I will be your guide on this course, teaching you the essentials and concepts you need to get good videos out of your DSLR camera. There is every possibility most of you already know how to record videos with your DSLR but at times get really bad shots and wonder why. It just might be a wrong combination of the key settings on the camera. Those key settings form our key points of discussion for this course. The aperture, shutter, ISO and white balance. Now of course it is easy to get the details online but specifically this session will explain how to combine the functions to get good video. Before we continue, I'd like to say, Google is your friend. Try as much as possible to note things down and Google it after the class. And of course, nothing beats pen and paper. So have a pen down just so that you can jot things down. I would also really love to say at this point that it does not matter what camera brand you use, these are universal concepts, and as long as you can run through the menu of your camera, you will find the same functions in there. Even some mobile phones allow you to make use of your mobile camera in manual settings. Going through the menu, you should find also similar settings. Do not let any camera intimidate you. Once you pick up a camera, all you have to figure out is how to get around its menu to get the settings you want. That said, let's jump right in. What would you learn in this course? An overview of the key manual settings, understanding aperture, understanding shutter, understanding ISO, understanding white balance, combining all the concepts for the right exposure and other tools to watch out for. There are four main concepts you want to understand to achieve good exposure, aperture, shutter, ISO, and white balance. For your aperture, cameras are designed around the human optics and thus our best point of reference to understanding the way the aperture works is by using the human eye as a reference. If you look closely at the human eye when you step into a dark area, you would notice that your iris open up really, really wide. Now this opposite happens when you get into a bright area during the day or under sunlight, you would notice that your iris close really tight up. This is the exact same way the aperture works. If you need more light to come into your camera, that is, you do not have enough light to produce an image, you open up your aperture. And if you need less light, you do the opposite, which is closing up your aperture. Now take note, the aperture has numbers, numbers called f-stops. Just as you have the example on screen, f2, f8, and f22. It looks exactly like this on most cameras. Now, the lower numbers means that your aperture is wide open, and then Bigger number, of course, means the aperture is closed up. So the higher you go in the number, the closer your aperture um, becomes. And the lower the number, of course, the wider your aperture opens. Now, just one more time, take note of the examples on the screen or on the slides. Now, going forward, um, these are more examples to what your aperture actually looks like in camera. The larger aperture, all the way to the smaller aperture. It just means you allowing more light or less light. The aperture is just kind of like a way of controlling how much light gets into your camera or how much less light gets into your camera. For a more practical example, I would also show you this device that has this exact look like your aperture. Well, it was designed to be an aperture, but it doesn't work exactly the way I wanted to work or the way I think they were expecting it to work. But you get the picture. Okay, now I believe you've digested the idea of the aperture. Now let's move forward to the shutter. Now I'm going to come back to the idea or the, the same image I used for the aperture because like I said, cameras are designed around the human optics and the best reference 
to understanding how these things work is by using the human is by using the human eye so one more time i used your iris as the example or as a reference for the aperture for the shutter i'm going to use your eyelids now something happens which you don't necessarily notice you kind of like blink a little bit more squint when there's too much light getting into your eye now the same thing or the opposite happens you tend to leave your eyelids or you tend to leave your eye or blink less when in darkness that is, there isn't enough light coming into your eye. You tend to leave your eye a little bit more open just so that light gets in a little bit more. Now, the shutter, I have this. Now, for the shutter, I have this other picture here, citing a good example. If you look closely at this image from the back, we find the image sensor, which registers the image. The image sensor is what registers your image and sends it into, you know, processing and stores it onto your memory card. Now, after the image sensor, in the olden days or in older cameras, you would find a film in the same position as your image sensor. Now, just after the sensor in front of it is a door, which is the shutter. And in this case, the shutter is opened. In front of the shutter, you have your aperture, which is usually housed by your lens. The aperture usually is in the lens um, body, not in the body of the camera. And of course, your lens follows in front. Now, the door at the back or the door for the shutter simply opens and closes just to register images on the sensor, depending on the amount of light coming in from the aperture. Now, to understand this a little bit better, for the shutter door, how do you decide when you want it to close fast or you want it to do it slower? If you are in a bright environment, you want less light to get into your camera whilst you take the picture. So what do you do? You allow your shutter to open just for a fraction of a second and close quickly. The opposite is done when you are in a darker environment and of course in between when you are in either a dark or a bright environment. Now for video, this is a little bit different. So I'm going to explain how it goes for video. There is the 180 degree rule or the 180 degree shutter rule when we talk about um, the shutter for the camera or when you set your shutter for camera. Now this plain and simple the reason for the 180 degree shutter angle roll is to have a proper motion blow. The rule states that your shutter speed should be set in relative to the frame rate of your camera. Basically, just double the frame rate of your camera. This is to say that if you are in a region like the United States that use the NTSC system, which is 30 frames per second, it only means that your shutter will be 60, which is double the frame rate. Alternatively, if you are in Europe, you would use 25 frames per second, which is for PAL, and your shutter speed will be 50. I am, I am having this lecture from Nigeria, and I conform with what we use in Europe, which is 25 frames per second. So it means, naturally, my shutter speed would always be set to 50. Next slide. Now, let's go on to ISO. As for your ISO, in simple terms, ISO just refers to your camera's sensitivity to light or your camera's sensor's sensitivity to light. Digitally, now this is just saying that your camera finds a way to digitally add in brightness or more light to your video at the expense of quality, noiseless video. So if you're in a dark environment, for example, some people will crank up the ISO hoping to get a brighter image. Now, this is the camera doing its best to digitally enhance whatever it's seen just to make you, you know, get what you want. But this often happens at the expense of having good video because the more you increase your ISO, the more noise you get. Now, this is an example of an image, um, you know, cut into two, of course. You know, one side has less ISO, which is ISO 100, and the other side has ISO 3200. Notice the grain and the noise on the image on the 3200, on ISO 3200. It's a very noisy image, so once you see this, naturally you should know that your image isn't having enough light or the ISO is set too high. Now, the ISO is just one of the few ways your camera compensates for exposure, and this is happening digitally within the camera. Kind of like a destructive uh, process, I would say. Now, more expensive cameras handle high as ISOs even much better. So in trying to put all the concepts I just mentioned together, it is nice to say that your aperture is your one-stop uh, way of adding um, more light or less light to your um, picture. 
Now, if you think about it this way, there are different types of lenses, and I don't want to go much into about lenses, that's a separate lecture, but some lenses allow you to open up your aperture as wide as, I think, 1.2, 1.8 or thereabout, while um, more auto um, lenses or zoom lenses do about 3.5, Naturally, it means that the 1.2 or 1.8 allows in more light than your zoom lens. And naturally, I would always go for a wider lens or something that opens up a little bit more if I'm in a dark environment, just so that I'm not touching too much of my ISO. As for the shutter speed, if you um, if you uh, remember what I said earlier about the motion blur, um, it's setting the um, frame rate, or rather, it's setting your shutter according to or in relate in is setting your shutter in relation to your frame rate just to have a, you know, a natural looking motion blur. Now, it only means that if you have more or less shutter set to your image within an environment, then the motion blur might look a little bit unnatural or you might cause something a little bit unnatural in your image. I know a lot of people do the mistake of increasing their shutter or reducing their shutter when they need more light in an environment. I think the go-to go -to option in that kind of case should be your aperture and perhaps a little bit of your ISO. Now coming back to my slide, um, this is a little bit of an um, illustration putting everything we just spoke about, all the concepts we just put, spoke about in one picture. Now um, from the left side or from my left side looking at the screen we have a wider pipe um, bringing in water and the, the width of the pipe or the um, diameter of the, of the pipe um, shows the aperture size which is allowing more water in and the tap is the shutter, which is either locking or stopping. If I need little water, I would open the shutter just a little bit. If I want more water, I would open the tap all the way wide. Now, how much of this light and sensitivity can I handle? Which is, of course, the container, which is at the bottom of the water, the container, you know, grabbing all this. And this is all happening digitally on the sensor of the camera. And uh, the same, or I wouldn't say the same thing, but the opposite, of course, is happening on the other side of the picture. You know, a smaller pipe bringing less water and the shutter speed, of course, being able to control how much of that water drops in or out of the camera. Now, um, going furthermore, now it's important to now talk about white balance, which also um, is something um, very important for um, you using your camera in manual mode. Some people have their pictures really, really red once they turn your camera um, to manual mode. That's probably because your white balance is on auto setting. Now to correct this, um, or let's even talk about what a white balancing is. What is white balance? White balance is basically adjusting colors on your camera to match the color of the light source so that the white objects appear white. So in simple form, it's just basically saying or telling your camera that see, in this environment where I am right now, this is what white looks like. And basically, you know, there are a couple of ways you can um, set this on camera. There are a few presets that um, usually would come with cameras if you're under shade, a cloudy environment, um, under tungsten light or a fluorescent light. And of course, um, the popular um, other option uh, that comes um, on the manual side, which is um, setting the temperature of your camera. Now, the lower the number goes, the, the, the cooler or the colder your picture becomes or bluish tinted um, color. And of course, um, it becomes a little bit more red and reddish the higher you go in that number. Basically, it means that you're making your picture hotter. So if your picture is set to a lower temperature, it's cooler. If it's set to a higher temperature, it's hotter. Now, I have this image here also to kind of like uh, give you an overview of what I was talking or what I am talking about. If you set your picture to auto, um, you can see it on the far left of the picture. Now, coming into the um, setting the temperature, if you have it at 3000 Kelvin, you can see that it, uh, it has this bluish um, tint on the picture. And um, going to 5500, now going to 5500 Kelvin, you can see that um, the bluish, bluish tint is um, reduced and things are looking a little bit more natural. If you look at the sky, it has a little bit uh, more of a natural look um, to it. Going to 6500 Kelvin, you'll find that it's beginning to have this reddish um, tint. If you look at the grass on the low side of the picture, you could find that, that um, um, it has this um, you know, tint um, on the picture. So the, uh, the basic thing to really remember is that the hotter, the higher the number goes, the hotter your picture becomes, the lower the number goes, 
um, the colder your picture becomes. And it's also important, like I said um, earlier, it doesn't matter what kind of camera uh, or device you use. Um, just understanding this basic concept uh, puts you on the right path once you see those um, figures. Different cameras would call um, this, you know, in slightly different um, ways or different modes, but they kind of like mean um, something similar. Once you see them, you should recognize them um, automatically. Now, let's get on the camera and show you all the settings. Now, I'm using the Panasonic Lumix GH4. Um, I would like to say this is one of the... Um, one of the few common cameras that people use um, around me i know that canon is the most used and um, perhaps sony also but i know quite a few number of people also use the panasonic i am a lumix person i love my panasonics so that's what i'm going to use for this um, um, illustration now getting on camera i have a double camera set up here yeah though it looks like a three camera since i have um, a camera as my subject all right, so I have a three camera setup. I have a three camera setup here, and um, the GH4 is the one I'm um, using um, to show you, um, you know, how to set your camera. Now I'm going to briefly take out the light. There's a light pointing on the Nikon, um, which is my subject. I'm briefly going to take out the light. Now, um, if you would notice. If I bring up the display of my camera, you would notice that um, I have um, ISO set to 6400, which is um, kind of like really high. Though you would notice that the um, camera or the Nikon is um, showing with pretty much less uh, light than um, before, you know, just because I've taken the light um, away. Now, I told you about the shutter. Uh, my shutter is going to be on 50 because I record um, with 25 frames um, or 25 because I'm recording with um, 25 FPS, which is my frame rate. So my aperture, on the other hand, is 5.0, and I'm using a zoom lens, which is 12 by, which is 12 millimeters to 60 millimeter um, Lumix lens. Okay, so whenever you step into any environment, quick one, this is what you do. Once you turn on your camera, the first thing you want to do is take your ISO down to its lowest value, and once you do that, you want to open up, uh, you want to set your shutter to whatever it should be in relation or in relative to your frame rate. And finally, your aperture, you want to open it as wide as possible. Don't forget, the lower the number, the, um, you know, the wider the aperture becomes and the higher the number, the less light or the closer um, your aperture um, uh, becomes and the less light it supplies to the sensor. So in this case, because I've zoomed out the lens, I have a less um, um, I have less aperture to to reach for, and the the best I can go is 5.0 if I uh, tune it down a little bit more. So if I increase it, it becomes a little bit darker. Of course, it's already dark, so I can't even tell it's getting darker. So I'm just going to open it wide to its widest, which is 5.0 in this case. Now. Um, this is where um, you now start bringing your ISO little by little accordingly. Now, it's important to mention, if you look closely at the picture, you would actually notice um, there's green already showing, um, you know, there's uh, artifacts already showing on the picture um, already. And I'm on ISO 6400 um, already. Now, I can see the camera, but um, if you're trying to get a really, really good professional looking um, image or video, this isn't the way to go. So I would really say, if you were really trying to get good picture, go first for the option of adding light to your um, subject if you are in a controlled environment. So in this case, I can see that the image um, is kind of like a little bit um, brighter, uh, which is a good thing. And um, I can still see some artifacts in the, uh, in the picture. So what I want to do in this kind of case, which also relates to um, an outdoor environment. If I had this setting and I was under bright sunlight, what could I do? Now, naturally, you wouldn't have to increase your, your aperture under bright sunlight, but the moment more light comes in, what I want to do is to actually kill um, the ISO a little bit more. Now, having this uh, video around this point, if I kind of like um, zoom in a little bit, you will find out that my picture looks you know, much better than it was. I'm going to uh, leave it um, right here and... Um, yeah, if you zoom in, you would notice that your picture is way, 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 way better than um, what it was before. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the light I'm supplying to my subject. Now, if I increase the light and yeah, I'm giving it more light now and you will notice that my picture looks blown out already. Now, this is what an overexposed picture is beginning to look like. Now, what an overexposed picture this is beginning to look like. Now, what do I do to in this in this kind of case? I'm going to reduce my ISO because I don't need this much ISO if I have enough light coming onto my image. So now I'm on ISO 800 and, and I think my picture looks, you know, a little bit smarter than, you know, it was uh, before. Of course, if you zoom in, if you zoom into your, your picture, you would find out that um, the image is looking a little bit, you know, better, way, way, way better than it was with the, um, the same, um, under the same condition but you know putting in a little bit more light um, onto your subject now just from the top again i'm going to make this really quick it's a very very simple process the moment you get into any environment now under the same um, light condition i'm going to um, turn out you know out out of tune everything and turn off my camera now i'm going to turn it on one more time and in a very very quick um, succession once you get into any environment remember any condition you want to make sure that once you put on your camera the first thing you look at is your frame rate your frame rate is 25 frames and your shutter your 180 degree roll says that it should be double your frame rate um, your shutter should be double your frame rate so if i have 25 here my shutter needs to be 50 so i'm going to change this to 50 this is my shutter and my aperture which is the second figure you find on this side which is on the left side or hand side of the car of the shutter um, i'm going to open it to its widest which is 5.0 um, in this case i'm going to tune my focus a little bit i'm going to tune my focus a little bit just to have my picture all right so my picture is in focus right now so i have my shutter set and i have my aperture to its widest now if the iso was set previously to it being very high or in this case very low um, all you have to do is take it to its lowest then only introduce the shutter as required as you need it do not over um, use the ISO because it's basically um, in a way like I said before it's a destructive uh, process so it kind of like um, destroys your image the higher it goes now at ISO 200 I think my image looks really um, fair but it's underexposed and um, I want to add just a little bit of that to it. Now, I think 400 or perhaps 800. I think 400 is, is fair enough. So I think I'll go with this. You always want to work with the smallest amount of ISO at any point in time. Unless, of course, it's very deliberate. Perhaps you have no option. You are not in a controlled environment and you need more light on your picture. Now, going on to white balance. Um, some people just have their um, white balance on auto. In my case, and this is the auto setting right here, which is AWB in most camera. You can see that it has this reddish, um, sort of like this reddish tint on it. You have some couple of um, presets in there, you know, tungsten, cloudy, shady, um, fluorescent, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to go to um, the setting I use regularly, which is setting the temperature manually. And uh, don't forget, like I said, uh, the lower um, the image goes the cooler your picture becomes which has kind of like this uh, bluish tint and the higher the figure goes the hotter your picture becomes what i use commonly is to just set this somewhere midway which is around either depending on um, the kind of light condition i'm under i either use um, for the 700 or i use 3700 usually this works for me most of the time Okay, so that said about setting the temperature for the white balance. Now, all that said, I think there are two other things I want to say, which is very important to you using your camera on man on, which is very important to you using your camera on manual setting. Now, those two other things, uh, you know, take it as a bonus is the focus picking. Most cameras allows you to, you know, focus assist, or in some cameras, focus picking. This is mainly to assist you in making sure you have your subject in focus while using your lens in manual mode. Basically, this highlights the part of the image which is in focus. Now, if you look at the image I have on screen, which you must also have, must have um, noticed on the image 
or rather on the camera earlier while I was adjusting it, the focus was um, the focus had um, the focus picking had some blue tint on it for, on the GH4, which is similar to the image I have to you on, I have for you on screen. You have this bluish um, um, kind of like um, sharp edges going around the portions of your image that is you know very much in focus. Now this is something very important. This assists you while you're working, even under bright sunlight, to know when your picture is in focus and when it's not in focus. This um, is just kind of like a fill safe. It might not be entirely perfect in some systems, but so far I think this has worked well for me. I think you really, really want to um, go into the menu, go look through your menu or the menu of your camera, look for focus assistant, focus picking, or something similar that allows you or that helps you tell when your camera is is in focus. Sometimes it comes as a whitish tint. On the Lumix GH4, it's the uh, bluish uh, tinted-ish. And um, on some other cameras, it might be white. Some might be you know, any other color, maybe red, I think. Um, yeah, and that other thing that I want you to um, um, know on the camera, which is also important to getting um, a well-balanced or a well-exposed image, is the histogram. Now, the histogram looks like the charts um, you find on the right side of the screen right now. Now, when it comes to properly exposing your shot, this is one of your greatest on-camera assistants. Simply enable showing histogram on screen while you walk could save you a whole lot of headache. Now, the question is, how do you know how, how to use or how do you know how to uh, you know, tell when your picture is overexposed or underexposed while using the histogram. Now I'm just going to give you a very, very quick, straightforward way of telling when your picture is, um, you know, exposed properly. Now looking at my next slide, um, I have this image divided into three. Now one side showing an underexposed, the middle one showing a correctly exposed, while the far right showing an overexposed image. Now looking at the histogram, once your, um, once the heights begin to gather on the left side, you can tell that your picture is o you can tell that your picture is underexposed. If the histogram or if or, of the chart all gathers in the middle or somewhere in the middle of your of your of, of, of the chart, then you know that your, your picture is somewhere close to being correctly exposed. Now, if it all gathers on the far right of it, then you know that your picture is you know getting overexposed. Now, another hint I would like to give you from my experience with some of these cameras uh, for the Panasonic Lumix. Um, what I do because of um, the camera's sensitivity to, um, to light, um, this is a quick tip. Uh, for, because of the camera's sensitiv sensitivity to light, what I often do with my um, Lumix camera is I often tend to um, slightly underexpose my picture. Uh, and by the way, it's always good to have um, an underexposed, you, have, you having an underexposed image is way better than having an overexposed um, image where your highlights are really, really, really blown out. So. For the Lumix, the sensor is the sensor for me or to me um, gets really sensitive to light. So because of that, I tend to want to um, slightly underexpose my image. While on the other hand, for um, the cameras like the Black Magic, I you know slightly want to just slightly want to overexpose it. Uh, you know, just a tinks and winks a bit because uh, you know I think the Black Magic really you know loves its light. So um, that's just a tip on the side. Um, so I really hope you've uh, learned something from this short um, class. Um, you, from the things you've noted down, if there are things you don't um, really understand, perhaps you want to um, note and um, kind of like Google them um, a little bit later or find a way to send a message to me. Don't forget you need to subscribe on all our social media platforms and that way you could send questions across to me on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm very present on LinkedIn and um, on um, on Instagram and YouTube as 28 Bay Digital. So reach out, send your questions in if you need to send your questions. And uh, for conclusion, in conclusion, let me go through this one more time. Whenever you get into an environment, put on your camera and your shutter should be set according to desired to the desired frame rate. It means double. And your shutter should be double your frame rate. If your frame rate is 25, then your shutter should be 50. Now, for your ISO, reduce your ISO to its lowest value. For some device, you find ISO 200. And of course, take it up as you need it. For indoors, open up your aperture to its widest. 
and while for outdoor you want to close your aperture or set it somewhere in uh, you know somewhere in between if you're in a bright um, daylight um, situation always consider first adding light to your scene if you have the option before taking up your iso your iso should only come up as required if you are not in a well-lit environment your shutter should not change unless it's deliberate unless you're trying to cause some you know kind of like effect of or something of some sort so work with less iso more or less aperture always kindly make sure to subscribe one more time follow us 28 bay on all social media platforms google twitter facebook instagram and linkedin till next time bye